Welcome to the EB PowerCon session, The Future of Service Calls, Augmented Video and Augmented Reality, with Luke Kruger, a co-founder of I See What You See. I See What You See is an augmented reality virtual work platform that helps the mobile workforce execute remote work. Essentially, you eliminate unnecessary truck rolls, allowing you to focus on the work that delivers real value. Indeed, the time is now for augmented video, augmented reality, and yes, it can even be monetized. Luke is a four-time founder and active angel investor. He serves as a director of several for-profit and non-profit ventures and is an active advisor to startups. He contributes regularly as a speaker, mentor, and writer on the topic of workplace innovation and fieldwork transformation. And joining me now at EB PowerCon is Luke Kruger with I See What You See. Luke, thanks for taking the time to join me. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate being here. Now, Luke, I've been uh, really looking forward to this conversation since ooh, maybe about a couple months ago now. Uh, I received word about I See What You See and how this technology is is being applied to service calls. Uh, and, and rather me trying to describe what this is, I would much rather have you because you're here. Tell me about <laughs> I See What You See and what it is that it does. Yeah, so our language would be that we describe it as a virtual work platform built specifically for the mobile workforce. And so I'll unpack a couple of those things. So a virtual work platform means most people would think of us as video, so a Zoom or a FaceTime built for enterprise um, with a whole bunch of bells and whistles that makes it more effective for mobile workers to be able to actually get work done virtually. Um, so we have augmented reality markup, and I know that we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, we record every session. Um, we provide a transcript of everything that's discussed on a video call. Um, and then we make that searchable and shareable so that uh, both internally and externally to your organization, you can collaborate with people on video. And we know that lots of people are, are using lots of different platforms for that right now. Um, the other thing that uh, that we'd like to talk about is that we're built specifically for mobile workers. So a lot of the tools like the one that you and I right now, Anthony, are, are using uh, Zoom is built for people primarily like you and I that um, have desk jobs that are able to be at their desk all day. Um, what I, you know, and I come by this honestly, uh, my dad was in the trade, so I kind of grew up on the job site, so to speak. Um, and there's not a lot of tools that are built specifically with mobile workers in mind or field workers or technicians or whatever language we'd like to use but people that are relocating their place of work on a on an ongoing basis um, we are built specifically for that and so one of the things that uh, people love about our product is we provide what's called a we call a universal connection so the ability to connect with any device no app no download no account no specific software um, we can connect with any any smartphone anywhere in the world that is amazing. Uh, and, and now just to add a little bit more uh, detail to what you just described, uh, when, when I read about I see what you see for the first time, I, I believe it was against the backdrop of uh, a utility customers. Uh, so perhaps a gas utility, electric utility, what have you. Can you kind of walk me through how the technology works in terms of the utility who is being uh -huh. called or, or summoned for service by their customers, how, how does I see what you see unfold? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, we try to come alongside all the existing channels that your customers would use to communicate with you right now. So they're gonna phone you, they're gonna email you, they're going to, however they might get in touch with you. Those are probably the primary ones. Um, well, the way that we coach our customers and they make the transition is essentially this. Anthony, you call me and you've got a problem in your home with or on the job site with something. And we start talking about it. And what probably most of your li listeners can identify with is the fact that um, customers often describe things in terms that we wouldn't use or <laughs> said a different way. They sometimes describe their problem badly or, or inaccurately. And so what a lot of our customers will do is they'll say, hey, I think I understand what you're describing, Anthony. Can I just take a look? And so that's kind of that transition where I see what you see comes in. So we're browser-based, so you can log into your user account from any device. So tablet, desktop, mobile, doesn't matter. 
um, you can log in just using your browser and then you would be able to initiate um, this video session with one of your customers by just entering a smartphone number. That's it. What's going to happen is they're going to get an SMS message that you've customized previously. It's going to have your logo in it. It's going to say, Luke from I see what you see is trying to connect with you, Anthony, please click this link to join. And then we're simply accessing their browser and the cam and their camera on their device. And then we're going to be placed into a call. Um, your logo is going to be in the corner. You're going to be um, using the back facing camera. So you're looking at the problem that, that you're trying to solve. And then I'm able to draw on your screen in real time, mark up the video, annotate it and say, Anthony, so you described um, this noise. Is this the, the piece of the, of the equipment that's causing that noise? And I might circle something for you. Um, and so I'm doing it, all of that in real time. You're able to see that showing up on your phone. And so there's just a lot greater clarity um, gained by number one, seeing the problem. Number two, me being able to interact with you as opposed to just describe it. Um, and then that, that call is recorded. And so my colleagues can go back and reference it later. If I do decide that I need to send somebody there to, to actually solve the problem, it's too technical for us to solve, um, then I can send it to, I can send it to one of my colleagues or my technicians that's going to go out. They're going to be able to review that and know exactly what they're walking into. It's, it's, it's just amazing. To me, it is such a powerful tool because the technologies are there. Who, who doesn't have a phone with camera and browser and all this other stuff? And, you know, the, the title of this session and, and the description of our conversation is, is sort of, you know, eliminating all those unnecessary truck rolls because mm -hmm. we have these tools at our disposal. Yeah. Well, as I said to you before, Anthony, I come by this honestly. So my, my dad started as a framer um, and got into the home building business. So in, in either one of those, um, and this applies to multiple trades and now with our customer base um, in electricity, in utilities, like you mentioned, in home building and construction generally, um, we see a ton of trucks rolling every day. And the vast majority of these, tri of these trips um, are spent just to take a look at something or inspect something or validate that something was done. And our core thesis around this was, let's just eliminate that, that piece that's frustrating for the customer. We've all had service win windows at our homes where a service provider was coming. They inevitably missed the service window and we stayed home all day from work to, to kind of wait for them. So nobody likes that experience. And then also for the business, it's extremely expensive um, to, to send an expert to a house to flip a breaker, to take a look at something, to quote a job. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of world that we wanted to live in and why we built this product is just, you know, eliminating that frustration on both sides. Um, I, I, I saw my dad growing up, a lot of his evenings and weekends would be spent running all over the city, sitting in traffic just to take a look at something that he could quote if he just saw it. And so that's the, those are the specific tasks that we're trying to focus in on. And for people that are hiring um, subject matter experts and highly technically trained individuals, you want them to be focusing their time on the complex fixes, not the, not the stuff that wastes their time. And so that's really what we're trying to get to. And, and I think you're achieving it. And, and you've actually sort of answered my, my next question that was going to, uh, that was going to come up in, in terms of what are the benefits to the contractor and how will this mm -hmm. revolutionize service calls? And, and I just have this image of your dad getting, <laughs> being stuck in traffic that is like, yeah, why wouldn't you want this? <laughs> well, it's funny um, to, to go down that road of what's the benefit to contractors and, and to service providers and people that are in their trucks. So we kind of came across two things in rapid succession, which kind of uh, prompted us to, to build this technology is number one, we found that within industries that are on, on the road all the time, field service, mobile service, whatever we want to call it, um, up to 50% of your working week can be spent in a vehicle. And that number just blew my mind because that is so much uh, valuable, productive time that you're using just sitting in the car, listening to sports talk radio, drinking Tim Hortons or whatever you're doing. Uh, but not not providing value to your customers. So, th so that was one thing. And then the second thing that I found is, you know, my dad is in his 60s, not the most technically, you know, adept individual. But what really got my attention is he was saying to me that his engineers, that his inspectors, the different people were asking him constantly if he had an iPhone. And I was like, well, that's a weird question. And the reason they wanted to know if he had an iPhone was because of FaceTime. And so what 
what I found is my dad was already using FaceTime to inspect things, to take a look at things, to quote things. Um, and this is somebody that you would think of as maybe not, you know, on the leading edge of technology adoption, right? And so if this is already happening, we started thinking, well, that's really great, but only 40% of North America uses iPhone. And so what about every other device? And then that's how we kind of went down this road of the universal connection and the ability to connect with any customer, any subcontractor, um, and how are we going to achieve that? And that's how, kind of how we got there. And so all the way from the very beginning of providing estimates uh, to clients, all the way through inspecting work as it's completed and troubleshooting, if that situation arises, all the way through there's opportunities to reduce the amount of travel that people are doing and relocating. And actually, out of curiosity, uh, did you take the I see what you see platform and and put your dad through it to see uh, see if he liked it? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So um, I'm a relatively new homeowner, and my dad's forgotten more about home ownership and and fixing things in the home than I'll ever know. So we used to use FaceTime, and now we use this because um, in addition to the video connection, he can draw. So when I show him my hot water heater and say something's not working. He can tell me exactly what to do. And so, yes, we have used it a couple of times. In fact, we joke internally in our company about we use it. We've all used it with our with our parents and family members uh, for various things. And it's become kind of a running joke about how we kind of really built this just for ourselves to use. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You, you built this for yourself. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, thousands of other people can use this, too. We should get this to market, <laughs> you know this is nothing that, that people don't already know, but everybody's expectation has become on demand. Everybody's comfortable with video. And then there was this whole pandemic thing um, and the amount of in-person contact that we wanted to have really went down. And so this was kind of the perfect storm for technology to, to be able to align around solving this problem. And then and then that's the other thing is our, our smartphones have gotten so good and our, our speeds have gotten fast enough that technology like this is now possible where it wasn't for, you know, the decades previously. You know, you, you mentioned a couple of things there, uh, you know, one of them being that because of pandemic, that's really accelerating the, uh, the, the movement and adoption of a whole bunch of technologies that maybe people weren't aware of. I'm, I'm hearing that a lot from, from all the various speakers at EB PowerCon. Uh, so I'm glad you brought that up, but, but also that's the, uh, uh, one of the amazing things about something like I see what you see is mm -hmm. in times of pandemic, you probably don't want your guys going to every single call if, if it can be avoided. You know, there's, there's less chance of transmission. It, I've heard it said that we, we jumped forward in, you know, these home service industries. We've jumped forward 10 years in about 10 days at, you know, mid-March, whenever that happened. Um, and so I've heard that said, and I, I think that's true. Um, the other thing that it has forced us to do, even in our personal lives, is everybody's very familiar with, you know, Zoom calls and, and these types of virtual meetings with friends, with family, with everything. And now we're all so comfortable with video um, to be able to bring this over to the workplace um, just makes a lot of sense. And what we noticed is that that was already happening. Customers will come to us and say, you know, we're using Zoom, we're using Facebook. Uh, FaceTime, we're using uh, Microsoft Teams, um, but they're not really built for our work. They're not really built for a field service environment. Um, we can do some of our work, but not all of it through that platform. Um, and then besides the fact that, you know, the analogy I like to use, Anthony, is we don't use our personal email accounts at work. Like I don't hire somebody and allow them to use their personal Hotmail account. Um, so why would we let them use their personal Skype account or Zoom account or FaceTime account, right? And then there's that whole saying that like, if you don't pay for the product, you are the product. And so all of this data that you're collecting on your customers and interactions with, with them and, and metadata and where it's happening and all of that stuff, we're all, you know, sometimes without knowing it, turning that information over to Apple and over to Zoom. And so they have that. And our, our thesis is why wouldn't you want to keep that for yourself and get some insights into your business and how to get, make it better? Excellent points. That's right. With all these other platforms, where is that data going? It's going to this guy, it's going to that outfit. How are they using it? Where are they sharing it? Uh, there's all kinds of stuff to uh, to think about without or, or going beyond just that, that video interface. I'm glad mm -hmm. you brought that up. 
Uh, I'm also thinking, uh, again, thinking about your this mental image of your of your dad in the truck. I'm th I, I'm wondering how many inspection authorities, you know, uh, not just uh, the, the the service uh, trades, but how many inspection authorities. Uh, Again, rather than having to roll out a truck for every single inspection, you know, maybe if it's just a, a new lighting switch that has been rewired, do you really need to send a guy out there with a truck or can you just hold up your phone and say, hey, does this look right? Mm -hmm. Anthony, as when you and I first spoke, I mentioned, as it turns out, Canada is really big and we all know this, right? And so what that means practically is for all, all of the examples that you were just giving, um, you know, whether it's provincial or municipal authorities, but in a lot of cases, we're drive it, driving um, dozens, hundreds of kilometers, multiple hours in the vehicle just to take a look at something. And that's very specifically the type of work that we're hoping to avoid. Like nobody is benefiting from that other than, you know, maybe at the SO station that's selling you the gas, that's about it. Um, but some of these things now can be accomplished in minutes that we're taking hours or even entire days before. You know, that's what that's what I love about the promise of this technology so that, uh, you know, more work can get done, we can be more efficient, and hopefully that that leads to more leisure time. Absolutely. Um, I use the example before of my dad, right? And it's as a as an owner operator of a business or, you know, I know a lot of people um, in, in this industry uh, spend a lot of time in their evenings and weekends quoting work. Um, going and checking in on job sites, all of that kind of stuff. If you can do that in a couple of minutes and, and get a couple hours in the evening back to spend time with your family, that is one of the reasons that we built this is we want to eliminate that those hours that nobody's benefiting and give you that time back to do whatever. So if it's during the working day, then focus on your business. If it's in the evenings and weekends, then spend the time with your family. Like that is really what we want to see. And by the way, we built, we started this and we built this because as customers, we wanted to see it. We wanted this, um, Anthony, you call me and we solve an issue in five minutes versus next Tuesday between noon and 6 p.m. I get to stay home from work and wait for you to show up. Like that's no fun for anybody. And, you know, on the other side of it, as a, as a business, you also are walking in, you know, it's hard to make service windows. And so you're walking into a situation where your customer's already frustrated and it's, it's just, everybody loses. You're an active angel investor. Uh, you you do all kinds of advising, uh, entrepreneurism, and you know you've you've been around. You've seen stuff. So, what sort of innovations do you see, uh, and perhaps you've already seen? Uh, but uh, you know, what do you see or hope to see coming down the pipeline in the months and years ahead, in the construction sector or service sectors? So I'll, I'll say this a couple of different ways. So photo and video, I think just this visual collaboration generally is here to stay. I don't think it's going to go anywhere after, you know, we emerge from this pandemic. Um, I think what we've all seen is we're, we're just able to be way more efficient and the, the data and the information that we're gaining on our workplaces and on our customers is just so much more rich because we're able to see it visually. Um, we're able to see it visually in high definition without all of the trips and associated costs with that. So I think that's here to stay. What is really interesting that we've been noticing in the marketplace, and not just us, but there's other people innovating here too, um, is the collection of that data for the business and be able to aggregate that in a way that it's valuable and giving you insights about um, what's going on in the field. Um, what is I'll call it a side benefit of not going in person anymore is you're creating this video and recording and you're actually now able to check in on your technicians and your people in the field to see how and what is happening all the time. And you get that information through various reporting mechanisms, whether it's forms that people are filling out. But as we all know, um, if you're working in the field, your ability to, and the detail that you're going to fill out in those forms is limited at best. Usually it's pretty bad because nobody wants to sit around and fill out forms. But if you're able to be on video and just talk, and I'm able to produce the transcript of that, you're able to, to now take that and gain some insight from it. And so it doesn't happen immediately, but once you get hundreds and thousands of interactions um, with your customers, you get to get some deep, deep insights into what's going on in the field and in your business. A, to get better, and then B, and this is the conversation that lots of people are having, is 
the, the best subject matter experts that work in the industry are aging and eventually they're gonna retire. And what is the plan for transitioning that knowledge down to junior technicians, down to new people, keeping that institutional knowledge on how you're working with your customers and solving problems best. And so that is one of the things that, that we see. Uh, so that's half of my answer. So that, that photo and video uh, piece is kind of here to stay. I don't think that's going anywhere. And then the other thing is just um, because we've all seen the power of data, you know, transition kind of over the last few years is we've really seen a shift within the industries we've been talking about utilities, construction um, and, and field work. The appetite for uh, business owners and for, you know, people in management to collect that data and actually start to create um, new products and new services. And one of the things that we have noticed that's been most interesting and an analogy that we kind of like to use is telemedicine, right? Nobody was really doing that before about 12 months ago. And then as it turns out, you can actually accomplish a lot over video um, and, and all of the friction associated with getting ready and traveling and parking and all of that. And you're like, oh, I just got a, a requisition for chiropractic or massage or whatever in five minutes over a video call with my doctor. Um, we're seeing that some of that behavior transition to the workplace now. And it's almost become an expectation from the customer's perspective that they're going to have uh, multiple other options. And I think the most interesting thing that um, I haven't seen a lot of conversation about in the industry, but I think it's critical, is that people are actually willing to pay for that now. And I think that's really important because it actually creates a new revenue stream for people in the industry, which is that um, we've seen really two things happen. One is that a virtual appointment is something that people are willing to pay for and we have some customers that are doing it. But the second thing, and maybe the most interesting is this recurring revenue model. Um, the, you can sell somebody a service package where yes, it's going to include you know, some electrical services or some piece of equipment or something, but actually there's a service component attached to that for us to maintain that and guarantee that it works and all of the stuff. And I'm actually able to bill monthly for that and provide the support service virtually so that it it becomes a really profitable revenue stream. Nice. I like that because it's all it's all uh, well and good to talk about cool technologies, but hey, now you're talking about money, you're talking about revenues and new opportunities and you know that's got to yeah. put a smile on anyone's face. Yeah. I'm a business owner myself. Um <laughs> turns out that is pretty important to make money. And so that is one of the things that we've been trying to help unlock with our custom, um, with our customers is, you know, what's a new revenue stream. And now we have a, a number of customers that have new virtual revenue streams and people are willing to pay for it. That's the other, that's the other thing that's happened in the marketplace is the technology is there and the behavior is catching up now where consumers are willing to pay for that. It is something I would pay for. Yep. All it takes is a quick search on YouTube of the millions and millions of views of DIY videos to know how badly people want to do this. I, we, we covered a lot of ground here and, and, uh, and I'm glad we did. And uh, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk about, uh, I see what you see, uh, but then also uh, the different opportunities that are involved with these augmented video, augmented reality platforms and, and how they're not just you know, the new shiny thing, but you can actually make these things work for you. I think you're, you're right. And that's been one of the challenges with augmented reality as a technology generally is that there were too many non-commercial applications for it. And, um, you know, as somebody who had this background within the trades, you know, and I've been exposed to it and then also a technology background to try and marry those two things. Cause what we had seen too, too much in the technology space is that um, I'll call them technology geeks like myself. We're sitting around build, building cool technology for the sake of it. But if there's no commercial application of that it doesn't really matter. And so that's why we've been, try we've been trying to be very pragmatic with how we build. What tools do, does everybody already have in their hands? Well, a smartphone is you know is our connection is our data connection nationally fast enough yes well the answer the answer is yes um can we actually and is the behavior there for people to actually do work this way the answer is yes and so we could sit there and build a new app and i don't know if you've ever used one of these anthony you know what the augmented reality that everybody's used to is kind of this you're shopping for furniture and and you can mirror this table into your kitchen or this 
uh, couch into your living room and it's like halfway up the wall and it doesn't really look proper and you're like well this is kind of interesting but I don't know how how applicable this technology is and I think we're seeing that really change and these are some of the very practical applications of augmented reality in the workplace. Luke, thanks again for sharing your insights and and all the the best of luck and success. I I wish for I see what you see. It's a it's a really cool platform and and I hope to see it making strong inroads uh, across Canada. Thanks for having me, Anthony, and giving me the opportunity to share.